Hey guys, Lyndon here from Visionary Universe. In this episode, we're going to be doing something pretty special because it's a pretty fundamental technique. We're going to look at creating fluid simulations with Particular. And that's why it's so good because Particular is a particle plugin. So it's definitely not very intuitive to be creating fluid simulations with a particle system. But particles are, well, kind of lame. But in fluid simulations are really where you get to the cool stuff, the cool simulations. And it really amazes people because it's hard to imagine how you can create such a a luscious, <laughs> luscious fluid simulations in After Effects. Usually you have to go through other software like Houdini, Maya Fluids, Turbulence FD, or other complicated mess that most of you don't want to, don't want to go through. So that's why these techniques that we're going to learn today are such a breakthrough for After Effects users. So, it's, so hopefully this will bring you to the next level of particular and particle and fluid simulations. Alright, so originally it started like this. So this is the little simulation I use in that Hue tutorial, and yes, it actually is active. And basically in that tutorial we just went over like hue, ch changing the hue techniques and a whole bunch of cool things. But anyway, so people were asking if I could create a tutorial showing how to create this. So I kind of recreated it to uh, make it look a little better for this tutorial. So basically I wanted to make this tutorial showing how you can actually create fluid simulations with Particular. So let's go ahead and begin, shall we? Let's create a new composition. And I'm going to make this a square composition since the particles are floating upward. It's going to be kind of a tall composition, if you know what I'm saying. So essentially in this tutorial, this is what we're going to be going for, this nice dynamic fluid structure. And we're also going to be going over techniques that cover how to create other types of fluid simulations with Particular. And yes, this is made with Particular. Let's go ahead and create a new solid, and let's go ahead and apply Particular to this layer. Alright, so let's go ahead and start out by bringing the emitter down here, because the particles are going to emit from down below and float upwards. And uh, let's go ahead and move this back so the simulation has already started. Alright, so you guys really know how I do not like velocity in particular simulations, alright? Because you can't tame the particles, they just fly everywhere and it's hard to tame the particles with velocity. So, but we have to have velocity in this, in this particular, simu <laughs> particular simulation because, well, for the following reasons, I'll show you why later. Alright, so we're going to turn the velocity up to like, th what, like 400, alright? And that's going to make him go wild and crazy. What we're going to do is go down here to the physics go to the air, and we turn on the air resistance, right here the air resistance, and we turn this to like 6, alright, so they really shoot out, but then they just stop, so essentially we don't have, we don't have any velocity past like a quarter of a second, because there's so much resistance, immediately after they're shot out, they just pretty much stopped, so let's go ahead and make these particles start floating upwards, let's go to the Y wind, start moving this down, which we'll do about negative uh, 450, alright, and then the particles are lasting too long, so maybe we'll change the life down to 1, so that, that looks cool right there. Alright, now we really need to crank up the number of particles, maybe like 2,000 particles. Alright, so you can see here that we really have to turn up that velocity so we can get kind of this round shape at the bottom. If we didn't have that velocity, it would just go directly upward like this. So we had to have that velocity, but we can't, we had to have that resistance also to keep the particles from going everywhere. Alright, so now we're going to change this from point to sphere. Now we gotta turn the emitter size X down to zero because that it makes the particles really hard to tame also. And then these other two settings look about right. So now all these particles need to die out, they need to fade out. So you can go to the opacity over life, but I think I'm actually starting to like size over life, so that makes a really nice die out. We'll make them appear in resistance and make them just fade out like this. Alright, I think that's nice. Okay, so now we're ready to get to the cool part, and this cool part is where we start adding the distortion and everything. So let's go ahead and go to the turbulence field and crank up the effect position. Alright, so there's a few fundamental things I've learned about distorting particles. And firstly, you need to change the size down a lot. So we'll go to the size and turn it to like 6. So you really increase the size of this distortion, and we don't want the detail of this distortion to be in the scale. We want it to be in this octave multiplier. So we'll turn this up to like 1.8. So now we have a lot of detail, but it's not because of that size. I also like to change the evolution speed down, and then we just change this fade in time seconds to 0.7. Then I'm going to go down here to move with wind, make sure to do 100%, because we really want the distortion to move with those particles, so let's make sure to do 100%. And let's go ahead and check out a preview to see what we have so far. Alright, so that pretty much wraps the particle simulation of this part. So now we got to turn this into a fluid. So what I'm going to do is start out by adding a vector blur effect. Go ahead and drag this onto the layer. And you might think where I'm going to do this right here and it's going to look disgusting, but what I'm actually going to do is go from type natural to directional fading. And this is really important to make this effect look like a liquid. So you can see it's kind of, there's some things pointing down, and we want this to point up, so we'll just change the offset angle to about 180. So now let's go ahead and turn the matte softness up. 
Or I think that looks good for the first vector blur. And what we need to do is because it's too harsh of an effect, we'll double click on this. Then we'll go to compositing options, and change this to about 75% opacity. Alright, so it kind of blends with the particles. Now we need to add another vector blur effect. And for this one we're going to turn it up to about 65 just like the other one. And it also needs to be a directional fading. So directional fading, I like the natural the best, but directional fading is actually my second best setting for vector blur. And we need to make sure and turn this to 180 also. So those things are pointing upward. And this is actually, you can see this is actually a really liquidy looking effect as it is right now. And we'll turn the revolutions up like to 1.3 so it's going to do more wrapping. It's making it a little more detailed. And we'll make sure those things are pointing upward. There we go. Look at that liquidness. Oh man, that's nice. Let's go. If it's if the simulation is too fat, too wide, what we'll do is we'll just go to the velocity and turn this down a little bit. All right. So I think that looks nice right there. And then we can you know judge how much vector blur we need to add. So essentially, the more vector blur you add, the more contrasted this effect is going to be. But let's not go too extreme. Thirdly, I'm actually going to add another vector blur effect, and we're not going to do directional fading. Just keep it on natural and just turn the amount up. So we can kind of play with this a little bit. We don't want it to look like this, but we're going to change a few of these parameters to make it look nice. Why don't we change the rigid smoothness to like 4, keep this matte softness you know, around there, and then we'll turn the amount up a little bit. Alright, so it's up to you to judge how much of this vector blur you want. you got to play around with it, though, to make sure it looks nice. Alright, so I'll go with something about like that. Let's go ahead and check another preview. Okay, so that pretty much concludes this method of you know making the particles look um, liquidy. So there's actually many other ways to you know blend your particles together to make them look like a liquid. I'll go ahead and show you what they are. So let's go ahead and turn off these three vector blurs that did this first effect, and then I want to add a CC glass. So if you just go to the surface here, change this to none, and then change this to alpha, we can get some pretty interesting looking effects. Turn up the displacement, and maybe turn up the softness, just whatever it looks good. So we get this pretty interesting bubbly liquid looking effect. So you know the, the CC glass is definitely something to play around with. You can also go in the shading and make this look a little nicer. Oh there you go, you have like this slime maybe coming from some kind of monster or something. I think that was interesting. And we do also have the option of turning the displacement down. So if we do that we get more of this, I guess, webby look, so it looks kinda nice. It's nice and you can, you can play with the other settings also. And you know it's still kind of that liquidy slime feel, but it's you know it's got a different uh, appearance to it. We can also maybe just grab the displacement and turn it down a lot. Whoa! Whoa! That looks nice! Oh, just grab the displacement and turn it down. I don't even know if it could look that good. It's got that nice, liquid, glossy. Whoa! It doesn't go down any more than negative 500, but that looks wow! I don't even know if it could look that good. But yeah, so CC Glass is really a nice way of portraying these liquid, glossy effects. And, and it's because it's like this package of effects and can be easily controlled by these three sliders. So it's very easy to create these different looks. So yeah, just play with the settings. The height really has some nice variation depending on what value you set that to. And the softness also can change it up a lot. So you can play around with these settings. So CC Glass is really a nice tool for creating this effect. Now I would definitely remember this setting because this, oh my goodness, this might be my all-time favorite. Look at that glossiness. You can even go down here to the shading, go to the ambient, diffuse, all those m material, shader, texture properties. You can really get some nice glossiness to it. And, you know, they shouldn't even call this CC Glass because it looks so amazing creating these fluids. So, hey, let's change this to CC Fluids. Boom. Nah, it's CC Glass. I don't want to confuse anybody. J just forget I even said that. You know, but it's the truth. Forget the truth. Whatever, man. And so that pretty much wraps up the CC Glass effect. So remember that one because it works very nicely. And next I want to show you how to do this with just one vector blur effect. So basically, we're going to keep it on natural and just turn the amount up a lot. So off the bat we get this kind of nice look and it looks actually kind of similar to the CC glass. All right, But what we want to do is maybe turn this down a little bit because that's one look. We're going to go for a different one and just turn the softness up quite a lot. So now we get more of this I guess, plasma energy type look. And it's not the best in my opinion but it's just, you know it is a different look that you can composite in with your fluids and everything. So there's pretty much three things you want to play with. The matte softness, rigid smoothness, and amount. All right, So those three settings. So what I want to do here is actually turn up the amount quite a lot and we do get this you know different variation of look. So just play around with the vector blur. You're kind of turn up the softness a lot to blend those particles together and then just play with the rigid smoothness. It can create a lot of variation here. Maybe even turn the softness down. So you can get some pretty cool looks with just one vector blur on natural. There's also another effect that I kind of like but it's very um, 
It's very intensive on your computer. It's called Midian. Now, I don't know why this is kind of hard for me to remember the name of this for a while, but it's called Midian. And you can go ahead and apply this. And what it does is basically it just blends like particles or just anything together to make it look like a fluid. That's basically what it's made for. But it doesn't look that nice. So let's check operate on alpha channels since there is transparent background. And then we'll turn the radius up to something like 5 or 10, just somewhere around there. So it kind of blends them together and doesn't look, you know, the best way to do this. Maybe turn it up a little more. But it does kind of blend it together and you do get this smooth, fluid look. And you can even maybe try adding a fast blur before this. And that kind of brings out some of the detail, actually. So that looks kind of like a nice fluid simulation. And you probably wouldn't want this as your final result. It could be something like you apply before your other vector blur effect just to kind of blend everything together. Or maybe even turn down the opacity of this median effect. Or it might be called median. I really don't know. I just see the title there. Median or median, whatever it's called. But it's a nice effect. It can kind of blend the particles together. You can kind of see what it's doing here. But it is very intensive on your computer, like I said, so I usually stay away from it, even though it does have a nice idea behind it. Um, and then just one last way that you can kind of blend this into a fluid. It's not the best way, but I just want to show you, just in case it's helpful. Just kind of fast blur the particles out like this, and it kind of blends into a fluid. But if it looks too blurred, you can go to Curves. Go to Curves, and since there is an alpha channel, we have to go to the alpha, and just add some contrast here to make it look so less blurred. So there we go, we kind of have... So it's still like a fluid or maybe like flames or something, but you know, it, it is a way of doing it. It's not the best way. We can possibly put these two effects on an adjustment layer, then turn down the opacity of the adjustment layer to blend it with the original, or then we can add some vector blur after this. You know, there's a lot of things you can do with this. I just want to throw that out there. Cause, so there's, you know, there's lots of different ways to create fluids with particles, and that's my take on how you can achieve that goal. But this is the effect we're going for, the three vector blurs, and it looks very nice. So that's you know the way I had it in the original example, and it does create a very unique fluid appearance. I think I'll go ahead and end this tutorial here. Now we are going to go into, I guess, part two, how to create the rest of the effect, but I want to end it here because, you know, turning particles into fluids is something very important. I just, I guess it's just enough information to consume one video. So I want to go ahead and end it here, and then we'll go in the next video how to finish off this effect and create, make it look good. But this video is just about how to create those awesome looking fluid simulations from particle systems. And I hope it did, you know, branch your mind off into some really interesting ideas about how you can make this awesome transition. Alright, I really want to thank you for watching this video. And if it's not a problem, like this video. It really helps me out. That would be awesome. And consider subscribing. That's wonderful. Be sure to check out part two. And it's definitely been fun, guys. I will see you there, hopefully.